Joined by Matt Patricia, the coach of the Detroit Lions, who took Jeff Okuda at number three overall. Uh, Matt, I heard Bob Quinn say this yesterday, uh, last night after the draft, that there weren't a lot of uh, people interested in making that trade up at number three. So uh, as the conversation wasn't there, what was your comfort in taking Okuda with the third overall pick? Yeah, um, I mean, I think uh, our comfort level was really high, you know, at that point. Uh, you know, there just nothing was going with the trades. And, and you know, obviously, in order to trade, uh, both parties have to agree. And it just was getting uh, to the point where uh, we didn't really have anything. So we just want to make sure we got a guy that we really liked, a guy that we thought helped our team get better. And, and certainly, uh, you know, Jeff Okuda, I think, is a guy that fits that mold. So we were really excited to have that opportunity. Uh, spent a lot of time with him. Spent a lot of time talking to his coaches. Uh, coaches that played against them, you know, just trying to do our homework there and just what a great kid, what a great competitor, great skill set. So, uh, you know, we're really excited. We, we had him on earlier this week. He really is a, a really interesting and solid young man who's come over some difficult times in his family. So, you know, you're getting a really solid person. You mentioned it, Matt, spending time with his coaches, and Bob Quinn pointed that, this out last night, uh, conversations with the defensive coordinator at Ohio State, really helpful because you don't know how much time you're going to get with these guys before we get to play in football. So from a corner technique standpoint, it had to be really important to figure out if this guy was going to be a good fit. How good a fit is he for what you do? Yeah, you know, um, that was really important, and, and I spoke to uh, Ryan Day at length. Um, you know, also, I think it's done a great job of just, you know, getting that program and keeping it going and uh, so competitive, so many good players on that team. So uh, from that standpoint, felt really good what, you know, Coach Day had to say. And then talking to Jeff Halfley, who's a good friend of mine who I've known for a long time, going back to, uh, you know, college and when he was down to Tampa and some of the things that he teaches uh, that are very similar techniques and fundamentals that, that we teach. So from that standpoint, that was huge for us uh, to be able to know that he's at least had that background, that teaching, and some of the things that we're going to be doing are the same sort of things that he was doing in college. So from that standpoint, uh, you know, it's just very reassuring. Yeah, Jeff now on to Boston College to be the head coach there. Matt, this is a, a draft that I've been making this point today. Really three-quarters of the draft, if you include the offensive tackles and the edge rushers, were spent on the passing game. So everybody knows that is what's so important. Uh, talk about the man coverage that you guys play as much as anyone in the league and how essential it is to improve in those areas to be a better defense this coming season. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think it's a critical part of it. And, uh, you know, I always love when, uh, you know, uh, man coverage and, and our team gets thrown around a little bit because that means some of the zone coverages that we're playing are disguising pretty good. So uh, I enjoy that. That's always good. It's always good for me when that's out there. But I would say there's not a team in the league uh, that when things are on the line, whether it's third down, got to have it type situations uh, down in the red area, uh, you know, at some point everyone plays man, you know, and those are usually the biggest moments of the game. And, uh, you know, in those situations, you got to have guys that can come through. So it's so critical for us to find those players that can, um, you know, really come through in those times and, and make those big plays. Um, you know, like I said, those got to have it situations. It's, it's critical for us. And, um, you know, it helps everything else around it. And I think you hit it, you know, right on the head, the, the passing game is so critical in our league and, uh, you know, being able to either rush the passer, uh, protect the quarterback or, you know, whether it's the receivers or the DBs, um, you know, those are going to be guys that just are just so valuable to your team at that point. Anytime somebody picks in the top five or six, Matt, people are always going to have a quarterback conversation and it bubbled up way, way early in the offseason process. Uh, can you get us all up to speed on where you and Bob Quinn and the organization are with Matthew Stafford who missed essentially the last half of last season because of the back injury? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, fortunately for us, uh, Matthew Stafford is one of the toughest guys I've ever met. So, um, you know, that was obviously a devastating blow for us when he got hurt. Um, I love Matt Stafford. I think he's an amazing player. I think he's a, he's a great leader, uh, unbelievable talent, and, and someone that we're, um, you know, just continually trying to do everything we can to build around, um, you know, him and, and our team to have success. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, you know, he's progressing along great. Uh, we're excited. You know, I just can't wait to get back in the building and, and really, you know, get a chance to see everybody, but obviously get a chance to see him. Um, he's just an unbelievable guy. You know, I've spent a lot of time with him in meetings and, and different, uh, you know, things that we're discussing and uh, just just really smart, great guy, uh, wonderful, you know, wonderful person. I think, though, you know, what he does in the community, a lot of it's underrated and he likes to keep it under the radar uh, that way. But uh, just couldn't be around a better guy. I love coaching him. You know, I love being around him. So from that standpoint, uh, I'm excited. It's, you know, it's one of the reasons I came to the Lions. 
you know, when you looked at the opportunities that, uh, that I had, um, you know, this was a place that had a quarterback that I really, really admired and really liked. So from that standpoint, um, you know, we always do our due diligence in the draft with all quarterbacks, um, you know, really as a defensive coordinator, uh, back in the day, uh, I did the same thing because the earlier you can get to learn these guys, the better off you are when you got to play against them in the league. So from that standpoint, I'm going to take every opportunity I can to try to try to, uh, you know, meet every quarterback I got to play against. But I just feel so blessed and so, uh, you know, so thankful to have Matthew Stafford on our team. Matt, that's a really good point, And I didn't really come to learn this uh, to understand it until I spent the time doing Monday nights with Coach Gruden that. In the draft process, when you're sitting at three, what a great opportunity it is to have these meetings and the deep dive into these other players. One, to know their value, to see how much interest there's going to be. But it also gives you a chance to be ready two, three, four years down the road. When you go up against that guy, you understand some of what has made him an NFL uh, first-round pick once you get the chance to go up against him. Yeah, no doubt. And it's a great conversation piece, even if it's not a quarterback. It's uh, somebody that, uh, you know, four years, five years down the road might be there in free agency. And you might want to know all of that information and you're going to pull out your notes and you're going to go back through all that info that mm. you, uh, you know, that you accumulated way back then. So from that standpoint, we try to track, um, you know, all the players in the league going back to obviously coming out in the draft and, and keep all that information and make sure that we're um, always doing our due diligence, whether it's we're playing against that person, uh, they're on our team or it's free agency, whatever it might be. Uh, we want as much information as possible. Um, you know, I worked for a coach uh, a little while ago that kind of taught me all those, uh, you know, all those details are important. So I've, uh, I've made sure to keep doing that. <laughs> when we saw everybody's backgrounds, the, the coaches, where they were hanging out, yours, you had the pencil going, you had all the computers, you got the kids back behind it. Since you were early, I think that was important. Once people saw your kids and yeah. uh, earlier in the draft, that forced almost every coach. You, you had to get the family around for their shot on national TV. So you, you helped set a trend last night there, Matt. Yeah, I love that you noticed that. That's, uh, that's why I love you so much. You're the best. Um, you know, I don't think people understand our history. You and I, we go way back. I mean, you were doing my high school sports back in the day. So, uh, you know, I love that you noticed that. Um, I, I'll say this, you know, this has been, um, you know, really a hard time for so many people. And, and my thoughts are, continually with uh, everyone right now that's on the front lines trying to help everybody that's, you know, not doing so well, you know, the doctors and nurses, uh, the people just, you know, doing deliveries every day. I mean, you just, you can't uh, understand the stress that everyone else is under while we're, you know, safe in our homes. And uh, I think we're all just trying to do our part. So, you know, with that opportunity to do the draft in your house, um, you know, uh, my boys were so excited. And, uh, you know, my son, Dominic, who was sitting next to me, uh, he just, he was all fired up. And I just thought, you know, what a great moment. Um, you know, I, my, my kids are amazing. My wife is amazing. And, uh, you know, wh how often do you really get to share that, you know, um, kind of just, you know, I kind of loved it. It was kind of great just being able to sit there. He's at that age where he really understands this stuff and he's knowing the names. And, and uh, you know, I think he felt like he had some insider info before everybody else did. You know, he knew who we were taking. So um, <laughs> from that aspect of it, I loved seeing him on the TV. Uh, my other son was actually hiding behind the couch. So I couldn't tell if his head was in the shot or not. But I think once that, <laughs> you know, once that happened, I'm sure uh, B Flow felt a lot of pressure. Uh, I'm sure, you know, there was some, some text messages flying around there too, but uh, I know, you know, just everybody's, um, you know, so appreciative of their family. So it was great to see. I was super excited to see everybody have their kids on and, and uh, you know, I do, I feel like we started a little trend there. So, um, you know, that was good, but uh, you know, my family's so important to me uh, and to be able to share moments like that, I just thought it was so special. Yeah, for all the time that coaches are away from their families uh, during the season, especially during this part of the season, this is bonus time that you'll never get back. And good for the kids to have a moment that they'll remember forever. And I should mention, you mentioned Matthew Stafford, you, your wife, and the Lions organization. Detroit is one of the cities that's been really hard hit by COVID-19. And the Lions and Matt Patricia and a bunch of the folks around the, the Detroit Lions organization have done an incredible job with uh, support for the community. And a shout out for that. Before I let you go, what, where, where are you looking? What are the areas of this team that had a lead in most every game last year? People forget that. What are the areas that you are looking at that you need to shore up here over the next couple of days? Yeah, you know, I mean, um, we're certainly, you know, building and trying to uh, get our team in the right direction. And last year, 
uh, you know, it was tough. We had, we had some tough breaks, but uh, the one thing I'll say about the team is that I thought this team fought every game. You know, they are tough minded, um, you know, a team that wants to compete. And, you know, we were, we were in it in a lot of the games and, and just those situations where we couldn't close those games out. And a lot of those um, opportunities we had where we needed some plays made or playmakers to go out there and make those plays, um, you know, where we can get guys like that, guys that can, uh, be in those got-to-have-it situations, those critical situations, and come through. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. I think that'll really help us get over the hump and, and kind of be able to close out a couple of those games that we need to. I love it. The, the, the Belichick disciple <laughs> will not give me a good answer on the positions he's looking at. That's why I love you. Thanks, Matt. I'll talk to you. <laughs> Great to see you. Great to see you. I love appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah, I'm like checking everything out. I want to know with the guitar. We got the hockey stick. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm checking that all out back there. So, Spring. Here you go, real, real quick, Matt. Springsteen guitar. Mike Arruzzioni signed hockey stick. My time at the Masters, NBC Olympic stuff, uh, and the Syracuse hat. As you, and there's a Syracuse football helmet back here next to the picture of Flutie and Tappan. All right, there you go. Goodbye. Thanks, Matt. Amazing. See ya. Bye bye. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.